Eternals. So, in the film, the Eternals are an immortal alien race emerged from hiding after thousands of years to protect Earth from their evil counterparts, the Deviants. So, before I go into it, um, yes, uh, there will be spoilers. Not, I'm not going to break every single that. I'm not going to talk, you know, break every single thing down. That would be too long. But whatever comes to my mind, I will be talking about. So all of you have been warned. Spoilers beware. Um, so let's dive into it. So going into this film, I heard that the cast is going to be... Well, first of all, the cast is composed. It, it's an ensemble cast. Um, composed of some very talented A-list actors and actresses. And, I mean, um, I'm not going to... I mean, I'm not going to pronounce all of their names because there are a couple names in here. You know them, You know who they are, but I'm not going to try to pronounce them. Um, but, you know, you got Gemma Chan, who also was uh, in Captain Marvel, and, and now she's recast as... Um, Cersei, uh, Richard Matson, and Kit Harrington. You got two Game of Thrones actors, and then you got a uh, Walking Dead actress. You got uh, and then Angelina Jolie and Salma Hayek. Oh my God, Don Lee. Um, and it's just it's amazing. You know this the cast is amazing. It's pretty diverse, and the and then also one of the members, one of the main characters, will be an LGB character. I heard about that when. I think that was like two years ago, you know, back in 2019. I don't know if it was D23 or um, San Diego Comic-Con. It was either one of them, but they, you know, they had like these posters and concept arts of, you know, all of the characters, their costumes, and then like the title of the film, and then they brought everyone. So it looked pretty amazing. And what was also amazing as a bonus was that this movie is directed by Chloe Zhao, who directed Nomadland. If you haven't seen Nomadland, you can wa you can uh, wa you can uh, check out my review for the film. But I love Nomadland. Uh, I saw it on Hulu. It's amazing. A gr it it's great. It's amazing. I loved it, and she's directing this film. So I was so hyped. I was so hyped. I was so anticipated, anticipating this movie. I I. I I started like after the trailer came out. After the trailers came out, I started to read like a bunch of Eternals comic books to like get my mind and to get some knowledge from uh, the Eternals background. So yes, and um, and then something happened, and then something happened. Eternals had their premiere um, in L.A. In I think mid October, and then critics, they gave their review. They posted their reviews of the film, and they all said nothing but negative. Their reviews were nothing but negative. Critics, and I was like, oh my god, no, please, please don't let this be true. Please don't let this be true. I want critics to be wrong. I don't want them to be right. This isn't. You know, people were saying that this is like the one of the worst. People are saying like this is the worst, not one of the worst. It's the number one worst reviewed installment of the MCU, according to uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Um, it is the worst, according to Rotten Tomatoes. It's the worst reviewed installment of the MCU, and I was like, no, please. No, no, I don't want this to be true. I want this movie to be good. I want this to be like all the other MCU films. Please don't let... And then I saw it, and I'm not going to lie to you. This movie is pretty bad. <laughs> it really is. What happened? This is what happened with this film. Oh my god. Oh, you know what? Before I dive into the negatives, let me talk about the positives. I mean, of course, the performances, the acting. I'm not really going to go into detail. Of course, the acting and the performances given by all these actors are amazing. Um, and I thought the action sequences, they were pretty cool. But honestly, like, the, 
you know, none of them was mind blowing. None of them really stood out. The one character that I really liked, like the way they used their power, the way they like utilized their power, is Makari. Um, Makari, like the way she uses her superhuman speed, like she's running all over the place. It was so badass, so cool, and amazing. It looked amazing, like visually. But everything else I thought was pretty alright. I mean, nothing mind-blowingly amazing, <laughs> honestly. Um, but, yeah. And then, like, this movie is filled... This movie does have a couple exposition scenes. There are a lot of... There are some... A lot... There are a couple uh, exposition scenes. Not as much as Doctor Strange. I felt like Doctor Strange, that movie had so much exposition. Here's this. Here's that. This can do this. That can do that. And it's just a lot of... That movie, Doctor Strange, had so much exposition. Like, like it was... Um, it was... Um, it was pretty crazy. But yeah. Um, but my huge problem with Eternals is the fucking pacing. Holy shit. The pacing in this film is unbearable. Like, <clears throat> there's so much talking and talking and talking and talking. And then cool action scene. Talking and talking and talking and talking. <clears throat> and there's like... And what, I mean, and what I mean by talking, I mean like characters like... You know, like, you know, the romance, you know, developing the romance between Icarus and Cersei and then, like, characters, like, sitting down. I want the move, this movie, there's, like, there's a very, there's a lack of character development. Like, you don't feel, you're not emotionally connected to any of these characters. Like, when Gilgamesh... Or Ajax, when, you know, when these characters died, you know, when these characters died, I didn't really care about them. I was like, I barely know you. I didn't cry because I, I barely know you. Well, goodbye. I mean, it's pretty sad. I mean, it's still sad, but I didn't, like, cry or anything. And that's a huge problem. There's, like, no, there's a, no character development or a pretty lack. Of character development. So yeah. It is the worst. I'm going to say it right here. It is the worst MCU movie. Period. I don't. I didn't want to say that. But yeah. It really is. It really is. You know. Comparing this to the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. The first. Before the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out. Um, people didn't know who they were. And then that movie came out. And people were so emotionally invested in these characters. Like that, Guardians of the Galaxy made you give a shit about a talking raccoon and a talking tree. Who would have thought about that? <laughs> but here, Eternals, you don't give a shit about anyone. Like if someone dies, you don't care because you don't know them. You just, you don't know any, you don't know much about them. You don't know them. Like, in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, like, you know, you, you know some information about, like, you know, you feel bad for, you know, these characters, for Groot and Rocket, um, and, and Gamora, and, uh, Drax, and, of course, you know, Star-Lord, and it may... And you just love those characters. Here, I don't think anyone's going to love any of these characters. <laughs> I don't think there's a character that I, like, really connected to. There's no characters that I, in this film, that I really latched on to. And that's unfortunate. I don't want to, uh, that's unfortunate to say, really. But, uh, yeah, there is a post credit scene, um, which um, I heard it was leaked. Which I heard like a post credit scene was leaked. It was with Harry Styles. Harry Styles, by, which by the way, like what? 
Harry Styles is going to be playing Star Fox, the brother of Thanos. And then there's also a mid credit scene, which I kind of expected. Which I kind of expected, but yeah, Black Knight. So maybe we'll see more of Kit Harrington in a future in the future of the MCU. Who knows? Maybe he might come in when King the Conqueror comes. <laughs> I mean, you never know. Maybe he's going to dress up in his Black Knight armor, which would look pretty insane. But, um, pfft, yeah. Eternals is... N it's definitely going to be... I hate saying this, but it's definitely going to be on the worst... My worst films of 2021. I honestly thought this movie was pretty bad. Pretty, pretty terrible. Yeah. But this movie isn't like Fantastic Four or Catwoman or Steel or Batman and Robin. You know, Jonah Hex, Green Lantern. Those movies are awful. But it's this movie isn't anywhere near those movies. I would rather watch this movie to like any one of those, of course. But yeah, it's you comparing this movie to like all the other films. You know, <laughs> Thor: The Dark World was the worst reviewed um, installment of the MCU. Like a terrible villain. And then it had like 66% on Rotten Tomatoes last time I checked. And then now Eternals is taking that place as the worst film installment. But anyway, yes. If you've seen Eternals, if you see if you've seen Eternals, let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. I I really wanted to love this movie. I really did. But let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for taking your time to listening to my review. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video, um, and I will see all of you lovely people pretty soon.